Whether you like the look of server actions or not in Next.js, the chances are the majority of smaller forms are going to be implemented using server actions. Now, in this quick little video, I'm going to show you how to set up a form to post to a server action. And it really is a handy way, instead of having to create a separate API route, we can just use a server action in often the directory that we house our component. So let's quickly take a look at the demo of this little form here. First of all, I'm just going to submit the form without actually adding any data in the inputs. And of course we can do this with HTML5 validation. That's not the point here. The point is this particular error message is coming back from our server action. This is the response from our server action that an email is required. And also if we do the same, if we add an email then, let's put tom at tom.com, let's hit submit. We can see name is required. Then if we complete the form, so there's no validation errors, if we hit submit, we get this loading state. And then once it's successful, we get this success message, thanks for signing up. So all this is being returned from our server action. So let's see how we can do this then. I've already gone ahead and created a demo project using create next app at latest. Then all we need to do within our app directory here, Let's go to page.tsx. Let's make this a bit bigger. Let's just gut out the entire page.tsx here. Let's add a main tag. And what we want to do is in our app directory, let's create a new file and this is going to be our form. So let's create a form.tsx. Now it's important to note that this form should be rendered on the client. It's a client component. So we need to use the use client directive. Then we need to export default function form. Then we're simply going to return a form tag. And within this form tag, we're going to have a field set. So this is going to make it easier to disable both of our inputs and our button whenever we submit the form. And within the field set, I'm just going to have two inputs here. The first one is going to have a name of email and the second one is going to have a name of name. So the person's name. I'm going to switch these around actually, so it's name and email. Then we'll have a placeholder for each, your name, exactly the same thing for email, your email. And just so we can see something on the screen, we need to update the input text colors. So we're going to have text black in here because it's not going to work otherwise. For some reason, the input's default color is text white. So anyway, we've got text black for our inputs. Let's take a look at this. And if we go to page.tsx and render our form, we need to input or import form from dot slash form here. Let's run npm run dev and check this out in the browser. Let's head on over to localhost 3001. There we go. We can see we've got our two inputs. So now let's create our server action. First of all, I'm going to add the submit button. So let's just add a quick button in here. Just say submit and the field set. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. MX auto max width extra small. Let's have a display flex and flex call and a gap of two. So now we're in a position to create our server action. So let's create a new file in our app directory and let's call it action.ts. We can name this whatever we like. It doesn't really matter. It makes sense to name it action though. So I'm going to export a const and again, we can call this function whatever we want. So I'm going to call it form submission. And this form submission then is going to take two arguments. The first argument is going to be the previous state of our form. So for example, if we return from our server action, if we return an error message and then we go and submit the form again, then our previous state, i.e. our error message will be populated in this first argument. So we can go previous state in here and just set that to any. Then we're going to have form data, which will be of type form data. And it's this form data where we can grab all the data from our inputs, for example, our email and our name. So then before we do anything, let's just console log our form data. And actually we need to grab each value. So let's go const email and set this equal to form data dot get email and do exactly the same for name. Then let's just console log both email and name just to see what we got. And we should see this console log in the terminal. So then within our form.tsx, we need to use something called use form state to be able to grab the value if the form is loading or not. So at the top here, this is currently experimental. So we need to import and actually I'm going to do it at the bottom here. So I get the IntelliSense const form state and set this equal to use form state. And we need to import experimental underscore use form state from react dash dom. And I'm going to import it as use form state. So it gives the illusion 
that we're not using anything experimental. So we're going to use use form state here. And this use form state hook takes two arguments. The first one is going to be our server action, which we need to import. So first of all, we can pass in the form submission. So this is the form submission function from our server action. We need to pass that in as the first argument. Then the second argument is going to be our default state. So anything that we plan on returning from our server action, for example, an object with a message property or an object with a success property, then we need to just add, well, we don't have to add, but it's a good idea to add the initial state within the second argument to our use form state hook. So in here, we're just going to have two properties or two properties that will be potentially returned from our server action. And that will be any error message, which be a of type string. And the default state will be an empty string and success. And the default success state will be false. And then it looks like we're getting an error here for form submission. And this is because we need to change our action to an asynchronous function. So in our action.tsn for our export const form submission, let's just update this to an asynchronous function and that will clear up that error. Then this use form state hook will return an array with two elements in the array. The first element will be the state, i.e. whatever we returned from our action. For example, if we return an error message, we'll have an error message in that first element in the array. Then the second element in the array is actually going to be the action that we want this form to submit to. So let's destructure those from our use form state hook. The first element we want to grab is the state. So this will contain state.error and state.success. Then the second element in the array we want to grab is the form action. So we can name these whatever we want because this is being returned from an array. So it doesn't matter what we name these. We could call this gym, for example, or gym if we wanted to. However, I'm going to call it form action and we want to use this form action then on our form. We want to use the action property and pass in that form action to our form. So from here then, let's test this out. Let's save our form.tsx and in our action.ts, we just want to return. Let's just for now return an error saying example error and let's console log what we get returned from our use form state for our state. So let's go console log here. Let's just console log our state. Let's take a look in the browser. And uh, we're getting an error here, and that is because I forgot to, in our action.ts, we need to make sure we use the use server directive for any server actions. So it's really, really important we use the use server directive at the top of any server actions. So this should work now then if we refresh in our browser. And again, I'm getting an error, and that is because I didn't enable in next.config.js, I didn't en enable the experimental flag for server actions. So we need to add experimental and server action set to true in here. So this should all work now. Let's go back to our browser and hit refresh. And there we go. That's all working. It looks like the width hasn't worked. So I've, I've got a typo here. Max width XS is supposed to be. So let's take a look now. And there we go. Let's hit submit. And let's take a look in our console logs. Let's move my head out of the way here. We can see we have a console log object. We have a state and we have an error message on that state. So this was returned from our server action this state object. So what we can do is also then use that error message within our markup here. So for example, we could destructure error here at the top here. Let's go const error, destructure it from state, and also may as well destructure success as well from state. So then if there was an error just above our submit button, if there's an error, we want to render a paragraph tag. Let's just say text red 500 rendering that error message. So let's save this and take a look at the browser. Let's hit submit again. And there we go. We have our example error. So now what we can do is implement some sort of loading state. For that though, first of all, in our action, let's import at the top here, underneath our use server directive though, we want to import set timeout from timers slash promises. Then let's just mimic a API call in here. So we're just gonna await set timeout with let's say three seconds in here, so 3000 milliseconds. Then what we can do in our form.tsx, we need to update our markup here slightly. So the next hook we're going to use is called use form status but we can't use the use form status outside of a form tag. Well, we can use the use form status hook outside of a form tag, but it's just not gonna work. For this to work, we need to make sure the use form status hook is implemented within a form tag. So what we can do is move all of this markup, the form body into a separate component. So at the top here, 
Let's just create a function form body. And we're just going to return all that markup here with the field set. And instead of error here, we just want to pass error as a prop to the form body. And error is going to be of type string. Then within form body, well, we actually need to render form body. So within our form tag, let's render form body. Let's pass our error message down. So we can go error in here. Then we can use this new hook then within form body. Let's go const form status and set this equal to use form status and we need to import this at the top here where is it is this one experimental underscore use form status again we're going to import this as use form status just so we've got the illusion again of not using something experimental so form status then will have a pending boolean on it so we can use this pending boolean to update our UI. So for example, in our button here, if form status dot pending, then we can update our label to say loading, else we'll say submit. And this button should be of type submit in here. So then let's take a look now in the browser. Let's hit submit. And there we go. Our button changed to loading. And there we go. After that three seconds, we get this example error. So that's the super simple way we can implement error messages and loading states using server actions. Now, there is one thing to note here. Ideally, I've not seen any solution to this, and I'm not sure a solution exists. If a solution does exist, please let me know. But the issue I have here is ideally what we want to do is clear this error message whenever we update some values in our form. So for example, as soon as we start updating the form again, ideally we'll clear these error messages. I've not seen a way how to do this yet. If you do know a way, please let me know in the comments because it would be great if this issue had a solution. However, other than that, this is how we set up server actions in Next.js.